This is John Cole at DiscountJuicers.com to do another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're going to troubleshoot the Shine Juicer. The Shine Juicer is our best-selling, low-cost, entry-level juicer. Um, I personally use it as my travel juicer. It's not my regular daily juicer, although many of my customers that don't want to spend a lot of money for a juicer but really get a good one uh, you know, will invest in this and use this on a more regular basis. That being said, this is a light duty juicer. If you want to do a juice fast, I uh, don't know if I'd recommend this because it has a, you know, like a 10 minute duty cycle. So it's a very short duty cycle compared to other juices we sell that could you run for up to 30 minutes or more. Um, because we do sell a lot of them, I do get some people on occasion that have some challenges with them. And instead of like a lot of companies will just say, return the machine, you know, for me on the other hand, I'm here because I want you to be able to juice. I want you to be able to juice with the juicer you buy, but more importantly, drink the juice so that you guys could derive the benefits of the juice. You know, it is shown in studies that juicing carrots and drinking carrot juice, you'll get greater beta carotene absorption than eating the carrots raw alone. In addition, you know, when you juice, you concentrate nutrients and you increase the amount of produce you guys can eat and to remind you guys, produce, especially the leafy greens, vegetables, are the most nutritious foods on the planet and the most under-eaten foods. I personally believe in my life that, you know, the more leafy greens and vegetables I could eat and displace and not eat as many other foods, including junk foods, processed foods, and excess animal foods, that's going to be a good thing. I've heard from a lot of testimonials from my customers that have gotten on the juice kick. They've lost weight. They feel like they're alive again. You know, they get more energy, and that's what I really want for you guys. So I am here to help you guys, to the best of my ability, troubleshoot your guys' challenges. And many times, I'll go back and forth with emails over customers that are having some challenges, and I'll be able to work them out with the customer if they're open to hearing what I'm saying and maybe implementing some of the techniques I'm going to do. Uh, you know, sometimes that's maybe maybe not so effective. So then I'll take it to the next level and I'll say, what are you juicing exactly? I'll go out and buy those ingredients and then I will juice those and show you guys what actually happens and more importantly, the right techniques to juice the exact items that you're wanting to juice. Because once again, I want you guys to be successful. And if you're not sure on what juice to buy for your specific recipe, please guys, I do this as a free service to anybody that lives in my service area, which is in the United States. Email me your recipe and say, John, I'm thinking about buying this juicer. Will this work well on this recipe? And I'll be glad to share with you guys my honest opinions. I've juiced probably more fruits and vegetables than all the different kinds of juicers than anybody else on YouTube and potentially anybody else on the planet, okay? And I'm here to help you guys get the right juicer. More importantly, use the juicer properly so that you guys can get the benefits of the juice because it, uh, it has made a difference in my life. It turned my health around from almost losing my life so that I'm healthier than ever and I rarely ever get sick. And I really want that for you guys as well. That's why I sell juicers, right? Because I know the differences it can make if you implement and use the juicers. Anyways, on with this episode. So in this episode, we have three customer complaints. Not just one, not just two, but three. We're going to pile in three customer complaints in this one video. First customer complaint was a customer wrote in. I don't have the email now, but basically she's like, the juicer is so difficult to take apart when you're done juicing. I can't take it apart. Um, we went back and forth and I'm like, well, if you, if you don't use a juicer properly and you try to cramp things in there too fast, it's going to block up. And any vertical juicer will be difficult to take apart if you are shoving things in there too fast. You're not letting the pulp flow out properly and it's not gonna come apart. Now, especially on the Shine Juicer, this machine is particularly interesting because you can't just take this whole handle off and remove it. If you try to take the handle off and remove it, it won't come off. That's because you need to do this in multi-steps. On the Shine, you need to go ahead and remove the top part first. So there's a little dot here, it lines up with the lock and there's an open, so you turn it to the open. You could now lift this off. The next step is you take the handle and then you rotate it and then it should lift off fairly easily. The way to get the auger and um, bowl, uh, screen assembly out is I turn it over and then press on the center tab here. This is a good trip for, tr trick for any uh, vertical juicer is press on the tab. You will push out the auger and the juicing screen in one fall swoop. Now that's the other thing I like about the Shine is that it is very easy to clean. You got one, two, three, four parts to clean 
when you're done couldn't be simpler, couldn't be easy. Now I want to show you guys how to assemble this machine. It's super simple, super easy. Um, once again, you want to make sure this little rubber flap or silicone flap is installed. That keeps back pressure on the produce. So you get a higher yield and this machine does hold its own compared to other juicers, even more expensive juicers like right in there with a similar quantity yield, maybe plus or minus, I don't know, five to 20%. In some cases, I'll use a shine where other juicers just simply won't work in the case of like cactus fruits. So you're going to want to put this on uh, the top here and then rotate it in place to lock it in. You're then gonna go ahead and take the uh, juicing screen and uh, drop that into place. There's a little tab here that lines up with the tab in the juicing bowl. You could then take the auger, drop the auger in, and take the top and put the top on with the dot uh, corresponding to the unlock and then slide it into place. If you'd assemble it correctly, then the machine will turn on. It's a fairly quiet machine. Um, and if you didn't assemble it correctly, like say this is a jar, you could turn it on and it, it won't work, right? If you put this top on backwards, this direction, oh, it's assembled, John, it doesn't work. Well, you have to make sure you assemble all the parts properly. They line up, there's a built-in safety switch that won't allow this machine to work unless it is assembled properly. So, uh, and then when I took this apart, like even though the customer, and here's the box, you know, she returned it and I won't, mention any names, uh, but I will say it came from Alameda, California. <laughs> um, I didn't have any problems with it. Now I took it out of the box. I fully inspected all the parts there. All the parts looked to be, you know, intact. But the challenge I saw was that I know what she was juicing. She was juicing for sure turmeric uh, because I could see the stains in the juicer and maybe along with the turmeric, she was potentially also juicing ginger. Ginger um, as well as celery and leafy greens should be pre-cut against the grain into quarter inch pieces or it can clog and jam the juicer and especially if you putting things in too fast and not pre-cutting things it will make your juicer hard and difficult to take apart to me i consider that user error because you're not using it properly that being said it doesn't really tell you how to use the machine properly in the instruction manual that's why i make all these videos for you guys in addition, another thing that I, I, I recommend you don't do is that you don't use the pusher. You see many people on YouTube and old school days, if you had an old high speed machine, you would put a produce in, you then would push it into the machine. This machine works on a gravity feed. So you, there's no need to use the pusher unless there's something stuck in the feed chute that's not going in. So I always encourage you guys to just not even use the pusher. In most cases, I just don't use the pusher. I will use a vegetable like a carrot to help push the produce in. But then again, you don't want to put force on it because then you're jamming in produce faster than the machine can accept it. Once again, this is a slow juicer. And as a slow juicer, it makes a higher quality juice than the fast juicers. But if you try to use a slow juicer faster than it was designed to, that's when problems arise, okay? So uh, let's see, oh, so that's the first thing. This machine appears to be working all right, but I wanna juice with it and see if it actually is all right when I'm done. Uh, next, uh, you know, uh, potential challenge with the Shine juicer is an email I got and it says, uh, a couple of months ago I bought the Shine travel juicer on your recommendation and I've been using it to juice a mixture of apple, potato, and cabbage according to your instructions. Unfortunately, about halfway through the batch, it always stops feeding the pulp because the tiny feed chute clogs up with pulp. Then the screen gets clogged with pulp and everything slows down. So then I wrote back to ask more and say, well, hey, what are you exactly juicing? So then I got back, I'm using two large Fuji apples and actually today I have Granny Smith apples, one large or two small gold potatoes. So I got that there. And then one eighth head of cabbage. So I got one eighth head of the purple cabbage that I'm going to try to juice. And, uh, and they say they alternate the different types and they feed it slowly and it's, and it's, there's a flawed design in the feed chute is what they're saying. So I'm gonna, we're gonna try this and then see how it works. So that's the second um, challenge I have. And the third challenge I have is that I, got, I just got a customer that just bought this, he got it, and he's like, John, this thing doesn't juice apples and carrots. So, I mean, apples and carrots, it should juice apples and carrots just fine. This recipe, I'm a little bit questionable, but it should work fine also. So we're gonna juice also apples and carrots. It's very important you guys write, use the right techniques when juicing. And I'll share those with you guys really quickly, and then I'll also talk about them as I'm doing it. Uh, number one, you gotta pre-cut your leafy green, celery, and ginger. Anything with long fibrous strands can get clogged in the juicer. They should be cut into quarter-inch pieces. Number one, 
Number two, when selecting produce to buy, make sure you get the most hard and firm produce. For example, Gala apples get really mushy and they'll make more of an apple sauce than an apple juice. Whereas something like a Braeburn apple, a Granny Smith apple, or even a Fuji apple, they, they keep their texture. They stay a lot more firm and they're going to juice a lot better for you. Also, when you select your apples to juice, you know, press on them. They should, your, your fingers shouldn't go in to dent them. If it is, that's apples too soft. In addition, if you're going to juice potatoes, which I don't necessarily, I think this is the first time I juice potatoes in like 10 years. Potatoes are something that I believe should be cooked before you eat, but you know, if you want to juice a few in, in a raw state, you know, it's, it's not going to be a problem. That being said, don't juice cooked vegetables. They're not going to work. <laughs> and then if you are selecting potatoes, once again, make sure you get them nice, hard, and firm. And then on the cabbage, you know, you just want it nice, once again, not soft, or any leafy greens, you want it just nice and firm as well. So I've already prepared all that um, produce, and we're going to go ahead and juice. So let's go ahead and get a catch cup out, and let's go ahead and get a standard cup out. So how, I'm gonna, how you want to juice in a shine juicer, or any vertical ju slow juicer for that matter, um, I'll put a link down below, juice like a pro in any vertical slow juicer, where I go into my 10 tips uh, to get the best use out of your vertical juicer the shine is a vertical juicer so you will have to apply my tips now of course in a vertical juicer it's always best to have some kind of hard root vegetable like a carrot um, and you want to alternate feed the items so you always want to put the softest item in there first followed by something that's a little bit more uh, like leafy greens and then you want to follow up by the hardest item so in this recipe it's a little bit difficult i'll probably put a piece of apple in first followed by a piece of cabbage and then i'll put a little piece of potato very important also is to let the machine work before you add the next piece in. If you start adding things in too fast, the machine will clog and jam and can give you issues. The other thing that I recommend is actually don't cut things into like microscopic small pieces. Actually, the juicer likes fairly large pieces so that I could process it properly. So I guess without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this recipe and I'll share with you guys how I'm going to do it. So first we're going to go ahead and take our apples and we're just going to go ahead and cut them up into pieces that could fit into the feed chute. Um, the other thing very important, especially on apples, is you want to remove the stem. The stem should not be juiced. They can clog and jam the machine. I personally juice the cores of the apples. I don't really see a problem with that, although the apple seeds do contain cyanide, so if you are concerned, you know, you might want to exclude them. In addition, in, in the middle of many apples, you'll also see mold or whatnot if the apples are quite old, and in which case, of course, I won't juice that either. Once again, we got to remove the little stems on there that could really cause some issues. And if you can't just pull it out, I'm just going to, you know, cut the whole thing out so that I don't have any stems. So, yeah, these, these uh, halves of apples are getting cut into three pieces so that they easily fit in. And this is the first step I always like to do. I always like to pre-cut all my produce so I have it ready to go. On the uh, potatoes, I'll probably cut the potatoes in half. And then I'll um, slice them into like a tic-tac-toe pattern, so that makes uh, six even pieces out of them as well. Now on to the cabbage. We're going to go ahead and take the cabbage. And uh, what am I going to do on this? I'm going to probably cut it down the, the top into, into half, and then I'll probably cut down into little pieces. And the cabbage will basically fall apart on you, so it's more like a leafy green, um, you know. Oh, yeah, very important, especially the base of the cabbage. Uh, there's some like fibers, so you want to be able to cut those up because they may also clog and jam the juicer. That's very, that's kind of very important, especially by the base where all this uh, thick stuff is at. All right, so now that we got everything pre-cut, now we get to feed it in the machine. So we're just going to go ahead and turn this machine on, get it running, and I think first we're going to go ahead and put an apple in. So once you drop the apple in, you're going to want to hear the machine work and you'll see the juice start to come out. Maybe some juice always comes out the uh, pulp ejection port as you start. So we're going to drop another apple in, let that get processed. Then we're going to drop in a piece of the cabbage. As you can see, I'm taking my time to uh, feed the items in and you can hear that cabbage getting processed. It will be a little bit loud. That's completely all right. Maybe we'll put another piece of cabbage in there. We're going to go ahead, let that process for a little bit until all the noise and the sounds kind of dissipate because then you know it's chewed up a lot. Once again, I'm not using the pusher. We're going to go ahead and drop the next piece of apple in. We put a bunch of apple and cabbage in so far, and now it's time for something hard to kind of help push all that pulp through. Currently, the pulp is coming out without an issue. 
We drop that in, we can hear it get processed up. You can hear the motor speed maybe reduce a little bit uh, because the potato is a bit more harder, firmer texture. Still pushing everything out, so this is all looking good. We're, once again, we're gonna go ahead and take a piece of apple, drop that in there. We're gonna, we're gonna let that process for a little bit um, before we put in some of the cabbage. I think the main thing to remember when doing this process is to make sure things uh, make sure things are cut kind of small enough so that it could drop in and get fed in. If it, the pieces are too large, uh, you know, then it might stock stop up and not drop in as easily as it should. So let's see. We're going to go ahead and drop in a little bit more cabbage, and we're going to follow that by a little bit of apple. Everything appears to be working all right with the shine juicer. Uh, once it processes that cabbage, now we're going to go ahead and put that potato in. Should lock on that potato and then help push out all that softer material from the apple and the cabbage. Once again, the pulp is still flowing, the juice is flowing, nice purple juice. We're going to go ahead and put in an apple. You can hear it. After you get that processed, then we're going to go ahead and once again put in a little bit of cabbage. You can really hear the cabbage working, right? As you see, I'm really not using the pusher. Very, that's another very important step. Uh-oh, now we see the pulp is maybe not flowing out as easily. We're gonna go ahead and put an apple and see what's gonna start to happen. The pulp is once again flowing very, very slowly, okay? Let's see, we're gonna go ahead and put in, uh, we're gonna try another piece of uh, potato. You can hear it crunch it up and the pulp is continuing to flow out without an issue, so that's good. After the potato, we're gonna go ahead and now put in like the core of the apple. Let's see how that works. Squeezing out lots of juice. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put in some of that purple cabbage. You can hear it get nice and loud. After the cabbage, we're gonna go ahead and let that process a little bit, then we're going to finally put in the apple, but don't feed it in too quickly. Alright, sucked in that apple just fine, now we're going to go ahead and put a fairly larger piece of the potato in. And let that get processed. Alright, so this is still working for me uneventfully, the pulp is still flowing out. Um, once again, always after the potato, we're going to go ahead and put in something soft like that apple. And then after the apple, we're gonna go ahead and put in some cabbage. And then you can always really hear the cabbage working. All right, we're finally running out of apple pieces and we have lots of potatoes left. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in a fairly large piece of potato. All right, pulp is still flowing without an issue. We're gonna go ahead now and put in an apple. And we're gonna follow that with some of the core of the cabbage. As you can see, this is working without incidents. Um, if you're the machine that you're using is not working like this and you're doing it exactly as I say, using the nice firmness of the produce, then I would say, you know, if the motor is like stopping, I mean, this does have a 10 minute duty cycle, so you shouldn't run it for more than 10 minutes. Um, but I mean, this motor, this juicer has the power to do this and it's not clogging for me. That's actually why I like to shine so much. It's one of the vertical juices that I find is the hardest to clog, especially on softer produce items. That's why I use it successfully when I juice cactus fruits. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and put in a potato. And the pulp is still flowing out like a champ. After the potato, we're gonna go ahead and once again, we're gonna put in another core of an apple. Follow that by some cabbage. Alright, and we're going to follow that with a piece of potato. My collection cup is getting pretty full, so we're going to go ahead and put in a new cup there. As you can see, I have a nice glass of 
juice. Still working fine without any issues. See, we're gonna go ahead and drop in some cabbage. After the cabbage, we're gonna follow that with a piece of potato. Everything's still working great. There's no blockages in the feed chute because every piece I drop, drops right in and gets juiced. And as you can see, the pulp is still flowing out. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead and put in a larger piece of apple there. Once again, I think page, patience is key when using a vertical slow juicer. If you go too fast, you don't properly cut things, you don't rotate properly, you could have really major issues, all right? Next, we're gonna go ahead and put in a whole bunch of cabbage. Right, still working good after that cabbage we're gonna go ahead and put a piece of potato in I think in this recipe provided you get nice firm potatoes potatoes are the root or the pusher vegetable that's helping push all the other items out that being said also very important to get the firmest produce quality for the best results all right after the potato now we're gonna go ahead and put in another apple Still working with that issue, and now we're gonna go ahead and put in more cabbage. All right, after that, we're gonna go ahead and put in another piece of potato. After that, another apple and a little more cabbage. And we got a small piece of potato. All right, we're getting down to the wire here. Just a few produce items left. I think we'll put in a large piece of apple, a larger piece of apple. We're gonna then follow that with some of the leftover cabbage. Gonna go ahead and put another piece of apple and all the rest of the cabbage. We're gonna follow that with a little bit of the apples, a little small piece. Let that process, as you can see, the pulp is still flowing out successfully without any issues. The feed chute is not clogged. We are still getting juice. And finally, you always want to kind of end on a potato, right? Drop it in. Once again, I did not use the pusher. Also very important, I pre-cut things properly, rotated them properly, fed them properly, gave the, time some, gave the juicer some time to work. And as you can see, like it's working perfect for me. So I really want you guys to, to like emulate when I'm doing, like watch this video like a couple times if you need to, to see, oh, okay, John cut it like that, fed it like that. I mean, this is done in real time. For the most part, I did very little editing to the juicing process because I really want to show you guys how long it takes. Um, and, it, and it basically worked perfectly. Once the machine's done, you could go ahead and turn it off, close the spout cap, and we got basically a one and a half cups of juice now if you want to tweak this recipe because this recipe I wouldn't say is super optimal you know you can maybe add an extra potato in there or add more cabbage in there you know those will help push things through properly and make sure you cut up your cabbage into like smaller pieces like I did if you're trying to shove big pieces in or big leaves that may be more problematic because the cabbage has some thick fibers as it gets down to that like center core where it all stems out from all right so this recipe was completely successful in my book, in my opinion. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next recipe uh, that a customer is trying to just simply juice something super simple, super easy, uh, carrots and apples, which really, really shouldn't be an issue uh, with the shine juicer or most other juicers for that matter. Now the main thing of course with this, since there are only two ingredients, uh, you gotta rotate the ingredients. So we're just gonna go ahead uh, some of these apples happen to be a bit smaller, so we're just going to go ahead and cut them up. Um, 
into pieces I could just drop in the feed chute without issue. And then we got some carrots. Some of these carrots are thinner diameter, but some are nice and fat. So these fat diameter carrots we may have to cut like lengthwise in half. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. And I'm not even gonna clean out the juicer in between these. I normally would recommend you guys use, clean out your juicer after every use and give your juicer a break. Um, if you start out with a clean juicer, it's gonna work a lot better than with a dirty juicer, but I don't believe I clogged it up. So I should be able to continue with this recipe. So we're gonna put one small piece of apple in, let that process a little bit, drop another piece in. We're gonna go ahead and break off a piece of carrot and drop that in, right? Here's the thing. The apples are soft, especially if you're getting like apples that are like galas or other apples and you press them and they dent in. Those are very soft to juice and those will give you some challenges when juicing. So please guys, try to select the right apples. Um, once again, Granny Smith, Fuji or Braeburn and check them man, press them. Uh, right now, apples were harvested in the fall season um, and some apples are maybe being shipped from overseas like in New Zealand at some times of the year and then they can get a lot softer if they haven't been cared for properly, like maintain the proper temperature. So once again, we're just gonna alternate feed pieces of apples and pieces of carrots. I'll probably put in two pieces of apple for every one piece of carrot that I'll drop in there. And once again, after you put that carrot in, you can hear the machine kind of slow down a little bit and process and you want to give the machine some time to work until you maybe almost start hearing the speed speed up a little bit before you put the next item in. Once again, if you start cramming things in fast and using the pusher, that's when things can go awry in my personal opinion. All right, I'm gonna throw another apple in there. And then sometimes I like to just basically break a carrot in half and put a nice big chunk and just drop it in there and let the machine work on the whole carrot to help push all that soft stuff through. Once again, we are removing all apple stems, very important. Once the speed picks up again, we can go ahead and drop an apple. Then we go ahead and drop another apple. Then we're gonna go ahead and drop in a piece of carrot. As you can see, this is going very uneventfully. I mean, the motor is slowing down when you put some of these carrots in. Some of these carrots happen to be quite old. They've been in my fridge for probably about like two weeks. So uh, always best to get the freshest produce that's not like super old. Once again, the speed sped up again. So we're gonna go ahead and drop some apples in there. I want you guys to pay attention to the speed with your ears as you're running it so you can kind of know if it's running fast or slower. If it's under load, that's not the time to add more ingredients. Also, I want you guys to keep an eye on the pulp as it's coming out, right? If the pulp is moving slowly out of the machine, maybe that's a sign for you that you need to add a carrot in because putting a carrot in there will kind of help to push the pulp out um, you know, more effectively, whereas the softer stuff may just mush and actually get stuck inside the machine, which is something you don't want to happen. All right, let's go ahead and put this core of the apple in there. And we heard that kind of slow down a little bit, but now we're just gonna go ahead and dump the carrot in there. I like to have the machine processing as the machine is processing, that's when I'm able to do my cutting. And then when it speeds up again, then we'll drop some more produce in there so that it could work on this while I'm working on, you know, uh, cutting up the produce. So once again, we put those apples in there. It slowed down a little bit. Still working great without an issue. Next, we're going to go ahead and drop a carrot in there. All right, all this is just going uneventful for me. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and just uh, show you guys the process. I'm going to continue to rotate feed things in a little bit at a time, and I'm sure this will work without any issues. As you guys can see, I'm almost done juicing the carrots and apples. I have three pieces of apple and two bits of carrots left. Let's see, we're just gonna go ahead and maybe put in another piece of apple there. We're gonna go ahead and put another small piece of apple in there. We're gonna go ahead and then put uh, the carrot in there. Once again, I want you guys to listen to see 
to know when it's done processing. You can hear the blade crunching it up. Once it's about done, then we're going to go ahead and put the last apple in and always try to put something like a root vegetable in last. Uh, this will allow the machine to clear out that softer apple. Now, the other thing I'll tell you guys is that carrots, they don't make a lot of juice compared to like apples, right? So you're going to put in like a pound of carrots, you might only make maybe like, I don't know, a cup of juice. And that's totally normal. You know, maybe you'll make seven to eight ounces, six to eight ounces, like depending if the carrots are fresh or not, all right? Once again, when you're done putting that last piece of produce in, you want to let the machine run maybe another 30 seconds because the machine's still processing. Things just don't go in there, it doesn't instantly process and then kicked out like a high speed machine. You know, it does take some time for the carrot to gr get ground up and run down the auger. How you will know when it's done is that you're going to look at the outlet port there and if pulp stops flowing and stops moving out and juice stops dripping out, then you know you're completely done. Uh, looks like pulp stopped flowing, drips uh, are dripping very slowly. We're going to turn that off. And the last step I like to do is I like to tip the machine up a little bit to get any last drips out. We're going to go ahead and close that spout cap. And look at this. You know, this is it. The machine did not shut off. It did not stop. We can, we're going to go ahead and take this apart in a second to show you guys what it looks like on the inside. But it, to me, this worked uneventfully, right? <coughs> Uh, if your machine doesn't work exactly like this and you're using it exactly like I show, then you're, you may have some kind of defect. That being said, I've seen very uh, good quality on the Shine machines and it's, it's, it's rare that I see any defects. I think, I mean, I don't, I'm not there to juice with you guys. I wish I was because I could hand hold you and make sure you do it properly. The best I could do is make a video for you guys and hopefully you'll follow my what I'm saying you, to you guys so you guys could have really excellent performance with this machine. I mean, this worked great. I'm really interested in trying this juice with the cabbage, apple, and potato. I, I rarely ever juice potatoes, and it's probably this recipe is probably for some certain uh, opportunity. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Mmm. It's not bad, actually. It tastes kind of like really watery to me. The apples aren't super sweet. It's just a solid juice, and of course, I always encourage you guys to do purple cabbage instead of Green cabbage is a lot more nutritious. Mm. That's a good, nice, mild, even flavored juice. Next, of course, I want to try the apple carrot standard juice. Um, I don't tend to juice a lot of apples with my carrots. Of course, you could do carrots alone or even apples alone. Once again, if you're not doing two ingredients, if you're only doing one, very important, you got to dial in your produce quality. Especially in the apples, you want to get nice hard firm apples or it will make more of a sauce than a juice. If you do have softer apples, know that you will make more of a sauce than a juice. And if you rotate them with the carrots like I did, it will work a lot better than, you know, for example, doing them alone. Let's go ahead and try this apple carrot juice. Mmm. That's a solid juice, man. Some people don't like drinking straight carrot juice. I love straight carrot juice, but with apples... It almost tastes like candy to me because it's so sweet. All right, now let's go ahead and take this apart because that was a challenge that my customer had. She said once she was done juicing, she could not take this apart. So once again, you don't want to just go to the back handle and try to turn this off. It will not come off as much as you turn it, as much, how, however strong you are, you got to take off the top part first. So I hold the handle with one hand, put my hand on the feed chute here, and turn it to the unlock. Now, it is a little bit stiff, you know, on this initial turn right here, right? So I get that. It does take a little bit of force to turn this off initially, um, you know? So yes, it is a little bit firm, but it can be done. I can see how some people might be concerned about that. Next step is we're gonna go ahead and pull this out, and look, we got a little more juice uh, stuck in there. And now we're going to go ahead and show you guys what's left in this machine, all right? This machine is an economy machine. It does not have an automatic wiping blade to keep this area a little bit cleaner. You can see we have some pulp to scrub out of here when we're done. And let's go ahead and look in the juicing chamber. Do we have a lot of pulp left in the juicing chamber? Well, let's go ahead and pull this auger out. As you guys can see, it's pretty much empty, you know? So if it's, if it's full when you're done juicing, You've done one or two things. You haven't run the juicer long enough after you put the last produce item in, um, or you haven't put in something nice, hard, and firm like a carrot, or maybe like a big piece of potato to help push all that soft stuff through, 
Or the other reason is that if it's full of pulp, maybe your machine is jammed up because you're not rotating things properly and it's clogging and jamming and then just coming up the feed sheet at you because it's somehow getting stuck. All right, so yeah, there, there will be some pulp residue left in the juicing screen and on the auger, even in the bottom of the auger, this is totally considered normal. And then over on the juice catch cup, you will see, you know, some pulp residue at the bottom that got through the screen. And then, uh, you know, and that's just, this is totally normal too, so we probably got a little bit more juice out of that, all right? So, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, to me, this Shine Juicer worked fine. Was it a little bit difficult to take apart when I was done? Absolutely. You know, I could feel this motor shaft, and we were using this a good period of time. I don't know how long this video has been running, but we probably used it over 10 minutes, but we were still able to juice, you know, like uh, three and a half cups of juice. This motor body is warm. Uh, in general, you wouldn't really want to juice any more than this, and you should probably juice even a little bit less than this with the Shine Juicer. If you did want to juice more, you would want to let this machine rest, cool off completely uh, before you use it again. So in the end of this episode, I will say that, you know, the Shine Juicer is my travel juicer. I like it because it's nice, small, and compact, and when I'm traveling, I'm not trying to go into juice fast. I'm trying to enjoy my vacation and just make enough juice to subsist on and stay healthy with. The last trip I took my shine on, I was actually in Hawaii making turmeric ginger shots. And uh, the person I was with actually didn't follow my specific instructions that ended up breaking my screen. Because the other thing you'll see is that if you, um, you know, feed things in too fast, you're gonna put more stress on the screen and your screen can crack. So if you are cracking a lot of screens in your shine, um, you know, due to no fault of your own, it should be covered under warranty. That being said, you can minimize your screen uh, breakage by slowing down and not feeding in things too quickly. Feeding things too quickly, it has it, things back up and then it has to expand and go somewhere. In many cases, it might be hard to take apart. Some cases, you might even break your screen. Once again, the solution is slow down, pre-cut your produce, rotate your items, select the best quality produce for juicing. I really hope this video has helped you guys out there that are having some challenges juicing with your shine or other vertical slow juicers these tips can be used on any vertical slow juicers. They're just the standard tips that I had to learn the hard way because I've juiced thousands of pounds through vertical slow juicers. In the beginning, the instruction manuals didn't tell me how to use it. I had to learn the hard, go to the school of hard knocks and jam the juicer up to get it clogged so that I couldn't take it apart on many occasions until I got smart and say, hey, maybe if I do it like this, it's gonna work great and now, you know, I can make these guys dance. Well, <laughs> almost. <laughs> So I hope you guys too, also, you know, I want to encourage you guys to stick with it. You know, we are learning creatures that we have the most powerful supercomputers in our brains, but unfortunately in our society, we're not taught to use them. So I would, I have a very engineering kind of like mindset and analytical mindset. So I'd encourage you guys too, like, hey, it didn't work this time. I'm going to change it up a little bit, do a little bit differently. I'm going to do it more like John showed, you know, select better quality produce. Let the machine have some time to work before I put the next produce item in. Don't use the pusher. This is an extra part. Now I don't have to clean because I did not use the pusher, right? Also, I'm ensuring that it's just going to work a lot better. Anyways, this is the kind of customer service you will get from discount juicers if you're having challenges. Because here's the thing. I want you guys to be able to juice, right? You're not going to get this kind of service from any other juicer company, <laughs> pretty much, I guarantee it. They're not going to go out of their way to make videos, to source the produce, to you know, show you guys exactly how to do it so that you guys can be successful because I want you guys to juice. I know the benefits that you can get from it. My life has been changed by juicing and I want your guys' lives to be changed by juicing as well. And I, I want you guys to stick with juicing and be able to use your juicer. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also be sure to share this video with somebody else that may have a vertical juicer and is having challenges with it. Also, if you enjoyed my content, I would encourage you guys to support me in my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. If you guys are looking for a low-cost, entry-level juicer, the Shine is the one I would recommend to you guys. Once again, link down below in the description and the first comments so that you guys could purchase the Shine as an entry-level model. Of course, the Shine is an entry-level model, and I have much better juicers that we're selling at Discount Juicers that you know surpass the Shine, although if it is a vertical juicer, you will have to use similar techniques as I showed you guys today on the Shine. I want to thank you guys who have supported me and have purchased for me in the past. And I'll thank you guys in advance for those of you guys that would, will purchase for me in the future. I know if I was in your shoes and you're teaching me about, you know, some widgets that I don't know anything about and you help me out a lot, I would surely 
support you because I would want you to continue in business and continue to do what you're doing. So uh, I appreciate you guys out there. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes that come out every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up, what new juicers I'll be comparing, what new ticks, trip, tricks, and techniques I'll be showing with you guys so you can be more effective juicers or other or use other health appliances that will allow you to eat more fruits and vegetables. Make sure you click the bells to get notified as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to comparing and contrasting and teach you guys how to use the juicers the best in your kitchen so that you guys could derive the benefits. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.